in today's lecture first thing what we are going to cover is about ram and rom of 805 okay after that we'll be looking towards the structure of ram okay after that what are the special function registers that we are going to learn after that we are going to see specifically some special function registers such as program status world okay and after that we are going to see what is the structure of room present in 805 okay so these are the topics we want to cover in today's lecture so let's start one by one and let's start with the structure of a ram in 805 okay so we know in 8051 we have 128 bytes of ram right out of that 128 bytes there is a typical division present now the division is division is the register banks bit addressable ram and scratch pad ram okay now if you see as i am saying it it is 128 byte size but this is more than 128 bytes if you see this all it is more than 128 bytes 128 means 7f so actually 128 is up to this one right this part is separate but we consider the this part that is special function register part is also a part of internal ram so the size of this one is also 128 bytes so this 128 along with this 128 that is 256 bytes of ram is present in 8051 but we are able to access only 128 bytes and that's why we say only 128 bytes of ram is present in 8051 for users access okay so the division is like this in 128 bytes we have a register bank 0 now if you see the addresses of register bank 0 it starts from 00h to 07h that means we have 8 bytes present in register bank 0 now every byte is assigned to a specific register and namely it is called as r0 r1 r2 up to r7 so 00 address in register bank 0 is given to register r0 then r1 is given as address 01h R2 is having the address 02H and so on. For register R7, we have address as 07H. So likewise, the addresses for registers is given in register bank 0, and this is same in case of register bank 1, register bank 2, register bank 3. So we have total 32 registers. present for our access now when we write the coding study we have seen example for coding in that we use register r0 now since the name r0 is available in all the register bank that is bank 0 1 2 and 3 which register we are going to use okay so in another words the r0 register what we have used is belong to which bank that is decided by the bank selection registers that we'll going to see in a special function register that which register out of special function registers is responsible for selection of register bank 0 1 2 or 3 right next section is bit addressable ram now if you see this portion which is from 20h to 2fh 
this portion is bit addressable registers now what is difference between bit addressable and the previous register bank is these register banks are byte addressable byte addressable that means a register each, each register having one address but in this area we can access individual bits of a particular register and that's why it is called as bit addressable registers after that we have a general registers present in 30h to 7fh this can be used for storing data and other functions okay so during programming we will be we will be able to access this 128 bytes which comprises of register bank 1 to 3 bit addressable memory and general registers from 30h to 7fh this is 128 bytes now what about the remaining 128 bytes which is called as special function registers okay so let's go and check the next one now this is our special function registers if you see if you count this there are 21 special function registers present in 805 now let's see one by one out of 21 the first is accumulator now you see the address of accumulator as well okay so accumulator is responsible for all the arithmetic and logical operations which is going to be performed by ALU this accumulator act as one of the storage element for operand and it is mostly using all arithmetic and logical operations some instructions only work on accumulator and not on any other register so it is very important special function register register b is also called as arithmetic operation register because register b is used in multiplication division and some operation specifically works with only accumulator and register b further when we do multiplication or division the reminder or the overflow data is stored in register b and that's why it is important too so the address of register b is f0h now then we have two registers which is used to address the external memory which is used to address the external memory and that is called as data pointer registers so combinedly we call this as a 16 bit register but internally it is two 8 bit registers this is data pointer higher byte and this is data pointer lower byte okay so combinedly it is a 16 bit resistance and we call it as dptr data pointer register and is considered as a 16 bit register and that's why the addresses of these two registers are sequential 82 and 83 h okay am i audible guys <laughs> Yeah, okay. <clears throat> then we have a next register uh, which is called as interrupt enable control. Now we know the name itself indicates it is used to enable the interrupts present in 8051 and you can see the address as well. Okay. Then we have interrupt priority register. These two registers that is interrupt enable and interrupt priority these are corresponding to the interrupts. Okay. And addresses are A8 and B8. Then we have a four registers which is called as P0 to P3. Right? Now don't get confused with P0 as a port 0, P1 as a port 1, P3 as a port 2, uh, P port 2 and P3 as a port 3. The names are same, but these are the registers present in our 8051 whereas externally we called it as port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3 okay uh, this 
registers are responsible for latching the data from respective ports okay if you check out the addresses it is 8090a0 and b0 okay after that we have a next registers sorry after that we have a next register called as pcon now the pcon is a power control register okay power control register doesn't mean that it will control the power of 8051 no it is responsible for the speed of a serial communication how much speed we are going to use that means if we are operating at a normal mode in serial communication this register will allow us to double the speed of serial communication and that's called as it also having some bits responsible for control of power but generally we don't use that bits so this is a pcon which is responsible for power control functions in 8051 and the address is 87h next we have very important registers called as psw it is called as program status word register now why this register is so important the program status word is a 8 bit register and it is having different flags now that flags are set and reset based on the operations performed in alu that is our arithmetic and logical unit based on that operations and the flags affected in psw we can perform looping we can perform if and else operation we can perform decision operations and that's why it is very important register in the next slide we are going to see in detail what is psw is next we have a two registers responsible for serial communication the first register which is scon is a serial port control register the address is 98 and then we have s buffer which is serial port data buffer 99h now why we need buffer is since the data is coming into a serial port after that next data will come since 8051 unless and until 8051 reads the data okay, the serial communication will be paused or it won't happen unless and until serial uh, 8051 reads the data from the port so what is done is this data is kept in a buffer called as serial port data buffer and this is that resistance register the data is kept in this bu this buffer until it is read by 8051 okay so we're going to see this in detail when we learn about serial communication next we have a stack pointer you know what is stack pointer stack pointer is used to save the addresses and the contents when we do a call to a subroutine or we can do a push pop instructions so this is very well known to you this address is 81h next we have t mode and t con these are timer and control uh, timer and counter control registers okay t mode is used to save the mode of timer or counter whereas tcon is used to control the timer and counters the remaining this four registers are responsible for storing the count value related to timer and counters so these all six registers are corresponding to timer and counters now once this uh, these terminologies or the functions of registers are known we will be able to use this registers in our programming and that's why it is important to learn about this special function registers now let's go and check out what this psw is <clears throat> if you see this is the program status word and this is particularly highlighted out of the special function registers because this is is very important as far as controlling and looping functions are concerned now if you see it is a 8 bit registers out of which the first bit or 
the bit at first position is undefined bit okay so let's start from this zeroth bit this p this p indicates a priority flag so parity flag what is meant by parity parity means if the data contained by the accumulator is odd or even if you want to find out whether the data contained in the accumulator mind will the data contained in accumulator is odd or even if you want to find this what we'll do is we'll check for this bit which is zeroth bit of psw and since this register is a bit addressable this is bit addressable register we can access every individual bit from this psw okay so we can check psw.0 which is a parity bit so based on this bit we can find out whether the data contained by the accumulator is even or odd okay now how can we find out this bit is set to 1 if the data is odd and it is 0 if the data is even next the bit at position 2 is called as ov it is overflow flag we know the size of accumulator is 8 bits if the result of any operation for example addition multiplication if it is more than the 8 bits if the result of any operation is more than 8 bits then the data will be overflow from this accumulator and that results into setting of this flag whenever the result of any operation is more than 8 bits this flag will be set to 1 okay this will make you aware that that your the result stored in accumulator is a partial result whereas the remaining data or the remaining result is stored in register b okay we will see in subse subsequent programming examples then we have this rs0 and rs1 now this is interesting bits these bits will make you able to select the register banks we have seen in our RAM. Let me show you. Now, which bank out of these four banks to be selected, that will be decided by these two registers, that is RS0 and RS1. So, whenever we choose RS0 and RS1 as 00, we select register bank 0. So, when this is 00, we'll select register bank 0. When this is 01, we'll select register bank B1. When this is 10, we'll select register bank B2. And this is 11, we'll select register bank B3. Okay. Based on this, we'll come to know if we are using register R0, which bank that register belongs to. Okay. So, by default, it is used to be a 00. We can set it to any other bits and depending on that we will be we will be using the particular register location in our ram after that psw.5 which is this bit f0 available to the user for a general purpose right now this the function of this bit is not defined by default we can use this for our general purposes then we have this AC flag, it's also called as auxiliary carry. Now auxiliary carry is if we perform any operation, let's say the result of operation is more than the lower nibble. <coughs> right? That means when the result of any operation is more than the lower nibble and if it is moves to higher nibble, then it is called as then then this flag will become state and it's called as auxiliary carry now we know <coughs> that means in talking in general 
if our result is more than 15, 0 to 15, right? So if the value in the result is more than 15, it is going to set our auxiliary carry. Okay, this will be more clear when we do programming examples. Similarly, the last bit which is PSW7 is called as carry flag and we know whenever there is a carry occurs out of any operation, this flag is going to set. Now based on this conditions, that is the status of this flag, for example, carry, auxiliary carry, overflow and parity. Based on these flags, we can develop loop operations. For example, I want to jump at some any other location only when there is a carry. Okay, so what I check is, I want to check set bit carry. If the bit of this flag is set, then I'll jump, otherwise I will not jump. So this kind of operations we can perform by using this all program status word flags. I hope this is clear. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. Okay, let's move towards the next slide which talks about the ROM present in 8051. Till now, we were discussing about the RAM present in 8051. Now, we we'll talk about the ROM present in 8051. Now, we know ROM is a program memory which is of size of 4 kilobytes. That means the addressing range ranges from 3 times 0 to 0 FFH or simply zero 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 h to 0 FFFH. Now in yesterday's lab, I told you we need to start programming from some different location and not from 0000. zero, zero, zero location. The reason is the initial positions are reserved for interrupts and as we know we have total six interrupts including reset. So the addresses of those interrupts varies from 0003H to 0023H. So with this information now you are sure that you can start your coding right from 30H or you can say 0030H. Okay, so this is all about the ROM present in 805.